Hi, this is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share with you my routine approach on dealing with the tiny pupil cases. As you know, I like to perform a mechanical fracturing technique for my cases, and I'll show you how I can do this on small pupils as well. So I'll perform the double chop and pick the chopper out to the equator, hold it from below, and then push down with the phaco tip, and I fracture the lens, I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator, fracture the contralateral hemineucleus. Within a few seconds, I'm able to create three uh, lens pieces, and I'm able to prolapse that one piece out and start emulsifying the lens. Again, um, I'm using mechanical fracturing forces to be able to break up the lens into smaller pieces. I perform this without using any ultrasound or aspiration or vacuum. And the reason why I do that is to minimize uh, use of energy, but also to be able to grab the lens material in very controlled manner and by using mechanical forces only i'm able to minimize risk damage to other structures i like to use my chopper as you saw there to prolapse the material into the central safe zone it acts like a little hook to basically uh, pull the lens material uh, toward me uh, without grabbing with the phaco tip and using aspiration and vacuum which can inadvertently grab structures you don't want to grab. And so you saw that chop maneuver again. I'm just always place a chopper out to the equator when I need to. And I place the phaco tip deep and I sandwich the, the instruments together to fracture the lens, just like you show there. And this is a one to two plus dense lens. These, in this case, uh, the, the lens is very easy to break and um, the, the fragments seem to separate very easily. So this is a really a nice case demonstrating this technique. And again, you're using mechanical forces to break the pieces up. Every time I break the lens up, I do not use any ultrasound or vacuum or aspiration. I only uh, use uh, the these when I'm emulsifying the lens pieces. So that was the double chop maneuver, and now is the cross chop maneuver. With the double chop, I am getting out to the equator and I'm rotating the, ch the chopper so that it's holding the lens from below. And then I lift up and then I push down with the phaco tip uh, on the surface of the lens and it fractures the lens in half. I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator and fracture the contralateral uh, hemineucleus. Again, all using mechanical forces only without uh, the use of ultrasound or aspiration or vacuum. So you can see I'm using the chopper again to bring the pieces out of the capsular bag, just like that, very nicely. I'm able to bring the lens material into the central safe zone. I'm using mechanical forces to break the lens up into small pieces. And then when I'm ready to eat the pieces, I emulsify using the ultrasound and a vacuum, and as you see here. And I'm gently feathering the pedal so I minimize uh, the risk of damaging uh, any adjacent structures. Again, I'm placing the chopper out to the equator and then pull, put the chopper deep into the capsular bag and I'm able to fracture that lens piece. Sandwich again right here and then um, use uh, ultrasound and vacuum to uh, emulsify the pieces. Again, every time I'm breaking the, ch when I, whenever I'm chopping and breaking the pieces, I'm using mechanical forces only like I am here right now. Again, no fluidics, no ultrasound, break the piece in half. And then when I'm ready to emulsify, I go ahead and activate the ultrasound and vacuum. And so why, why do I wanna do this? Well, remember, um, if you can minimize ultrasound and vacuum, I think that you can provide a safer surgery. And um, if you can perform a technique that's consistent uh, throughout a wide range of lens densities and pupil sizes, it can streamline your technique and approach and uh, make your surgeries a lot more efficient and consistent. And so you can see this is another one to two plus uh, nuclear density. Uh, the lens has come out fairly nicely. And uh, I'm gonna remove this last piece of epinucleus. I like to get that chopper in between the capsular bag and the phaco tip when I'm removing uh, the epinucleus or the, the last uh, nuclear fragments just to create a little barrier. And so that's the last bit of removal of that lens. 
Now this next case is a softer lens and you'll actually see how quickly it emulsifies with this technique. Chopper goes out to the equator, holding the lens from below. The phaco tip goes into the lens material. It sandwiches the lens, again, using mechanical forces only. I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator and fracture the contralateral hemonucleus. So again, very quickly, without using any ultrasound or fluidics, I'm able to uh, remove that, um, that fragment and remove, turn the lens in front of me, sandwich the lens, again, just using mechanical forces, and then I'm able to emulsify the lens pieces uh, once uh, they're more mobile. And you want to be able to continue to work in the central safe zone, which I am and during this entire case. And um, this technique is independent of pupil size. And so, again, I'm performing the same maneuver, take the chopper out to the equator, hold it from below, push down with the phaco tip as I raise up with the chopper, both instruments meet in the middle and the lens is fractured. There's no zonular stress with this maneuver. You perform the cross chop by placing the chopper out to the contralateral equator and fracturing that lens as well. You're gonna prolapse this fragment towards the center using the chopper. And um, again, this technique is nice because uh, you're able to work in the central safe zone, even though it's smaller than in a big pupil, Again, the technique and the movements are still the same. You saw me pull that piece into the center. You can see the iris trying to come forward, but that's fine. I can use my chopper to hold the iris back. I'm sandwiching the lens pieces, break it up into smaller pieces, and then I emulsify. By not using ultrasound or vacuum during the chopping steps during the disassembly, I'm able to minimize uh, the vacuum and aspiration, which minimizes uh, exposure to the iris and the posterior capsule. So why is this important? Why do I like to do this versus using a ring or um, some other technique? Well, this technique does not require a red reflex. With sculpting, you need a red reflex in order to sculpt, 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 and determine how deep you go. When you have a small pupil, there isn't a very good red reflex. This technique is in red reflex independent. Number two, if you're using traditional chop techniques, you have to impale into the lens material, hold it with high vacuum and then chop. And if you have using high vacuum, especially with such a small pupil, you might inadvertently grab the iris or some other structure. Whereas this, if you're using mechanical forces only, you're not relying on high vacuum, which can be uncontrolled and you might grab something you don't want to. But by using mechanical forces, you don't even have to worry about accidentally grabbing something you don't want to. And also you're, you're working in the central safe zone the entire time. And um, it's an issue of just staying consistent, keeping your instruments right in the middle. And whether it's a big pupil or a small pupil, it doesn't really matter. You're able to continue the technique and uh, chop the lens into small pieces and just feathering the pedal and uh, emulsifying the lens pieces as you go. Now remember, uh, rings have issues also. Rings are not perfect. You can get iris trauma, you can get sphincter damage, you can get pupillary distortion. Sometimes the rings can disengage from the pupil and then the rings can end up underneath the iris or get dislodged. And uh, some people have caused uh, capsular tears. Or, and so uh, there are some hosts of issues. Certainly uh, with proper technique, rings work fine. Same thing with hooks. Hooks have less of an issue because you're fixing any the sclera, but nonetheless, that's more maneuvering, that's more instrumentation. And uh, again, you have to use in those instruments if you depend on a red reflex. You have to use those instruments if you uh, are afraid of grabbing the iris when you're doing your cataract surgery technique. But if you have a technique like this, you can keep the phaco tip in the central safe zone and not worry about putting the phaco tip deep into the capsular bag or underneath the iris where it can be dangerous because it's always kept in the middle. Uh, and with this technique, the chopper is doing all the work of getting into the uh, capsular bag and prolapsing lens material into the center. And the phaco tip stays in the middle primarily. Now, sometimes you have to perform a deep chop, 
But again, when you're performing a deep chop or a sideways chop, or you're uh, trying to get your two instruments around the lens material, during those moments, you're not activating ultrasound or vacuum. And so even if you're getting close to the iris or you have the phaco tip deeper into the capsular bag, it doesn't really matter because again, you're not activating the foot pedal at all. But once you perform the chop, once you get the two instruments around the lens material and you fracture it with mechanical forces, um, only then after you fracture the lens material can you go ahead and activate uh, the foot pedal and start to emulsify the lens. So this is a very, very controlled technique. I'm just simply trying to show you a different way of doing cataract surgery, which is essentially uh, independent of the red reflex. It's independent of needing a large pupil. It is um, very controlled. Uh, again, uh, you're placing the chopper out to the equator, get under the lens, and you're pushing down with the phaco tip. You fracture the lens in half. You take the chopper out to the contralateral equator, and you bring the chopper towards the middle, and it fractures that right hemineucleus. And so again, just a different way of doing cataract surgery. Um, I call this a phaco-assisted technique versus phaco-driven, where uh, traditional techniques, whether it's sculpting or chopping, really depend upon the phaco handpiece doing all, a lot of the work. With uh, sculpting, you need to sculpt and sculpt and sculpt using ultrasound to create um, grooves and troughs in the lens material. That's a very, very dependent upon the phaco uh, handpiece. If you're using the typical uh, chop techniques, you have to hold the lens material steady and then you fracture the lens, whether you're doing vertical chopping or horizontal chopping, you really need to fixate and immobilize that lens material in order to perform your chop technique. And uh, again, you have to depend upon lollipopping that lens and holding it with traditional chop. With this technique, everything is really driven by mechanical vector forces. You're sandwiching the lens material, whether you're doing a double chop or a cross chop, or just sandwiching lens material after uh, those initial maneuvers. All of it is really a mechanical uh, fracturing uh, technique. And uh, this helps really minimize uh, risk and trauma. You're able to use a lot less ultrasound energy and you don't have to worry or you're not dependent upon using the phaco tip to grab deep into the capsule bag and risk grabbing the posterior capsule. You can see here, this is quite a bit of a floppy iris. This is truly an IFIS case. The iris is really trying to come into the port and I have to use my um, chopper to hold that iris back. Um, but again, it's only, I'm, I'm pulsing and feathering the pedal so I'm not uh, causing any iris damage. It just went into the port, but I didn't ultrasound, I uh, didn't apply any ultrasound energy to the iris, so there shouldn't be any uh, damage to the iris itself. There shouldn't be any uh, iris uh, defects uh, by grabbing it. Again, and because I'm not really as dependent upon using the ultrasound and vacuum with this technique, I am less likely to cause damage to the iris uh, with these small pupils. So again, I broke the lens in half, again, using mechanical forces, and then I break the right hemineucleus, again, with mechanical forces. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to grab that piece in front of me. Again, you can see how floppy this iris is and how it's really moving around. This is the last case I'll be showing you. Uh, again, you want to bring the lens material into the center. Sometimes, like this one, is a very soft lens, and it's, uh, it's kind of cheese wiring through as I'm trying to grab the lens material. It's a very sticky lens, so this is really the most challenging of the, the cases that I've shown you so far. And you want to just make sure that chopper keeps the iris away. And again, use that chopper to hook and pull the lens material into the central safe zone, like I did there, and then you're able to emulsify the lens pieces as they come. So again, you're using mechanical vector forces, you're using the chopper uh, to uh, pull the lens material into central safe zone. As long as you keep your lens material in the central safe zone, uh, this case is a routine cataract case. Uh, patients tend to do very well. Because I'm not using rings or hooks, I have a lot less pigment dispersion at the end of the case. I don't have any pupillary distortion. 
There is very little anterior chamber reaction in their clear corneas and excellent postoperative vision right after the case. Now, I want to emphasize for ultra brunescent lenses and weak zonules, I do not employ this technique. I think you should use iris hooks. Uh, and because the density of the lens, you have to use a lot more ultrasound and vacuum. As a result, I do not employ that. But otherwise, for small pup pupils with soft lenses up to two plus NSCs, this technique works very well, very consistent. I haven't any, had any complications or difficulty doing this technique. And again, because this is really a pupil independent technique, I'm able to do very safe surgery, very efficient surgery. I hope this was helpful to you. And hopefully this is a different way to look at small pupils without being intimidated by them. My use of the complex code has dr dramatically been reduced because of this. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for your attention.